This time I have a Lin Magic 6100. This is a six channel power amplifier made in the UK. Very high end, very prestigious, very expensive. Sounds more like a sewing machine than a high end amplifier. This time I have a prestige piece of equipment. This is a Lin Magic 6100. And this one here, apparently it's dead. So let's uh, tear into it and see why it's dead. So let's try powering this unit up. And that's all it does. Sounds like a power supply problem, what it sounds like. Let's just get this cover off this power board. So I want to take a look here under the, uh, under the cover here. The power supply board is in here. I actually have another power supply that was sent in with it that's also defective. So looks like the power supply has failed and he replaced the power supply and then the new one went bad and he sent me the unit and the power supply to see whether I can get them running. I don't have any guarantee that I will because I really don't know a heck of a lot about these Lin units. I've only ever seen one in my entire life. And that was one I just so happened to get going for a fella, for a local guy. And this fellow saw me fix that one and wanted me to take a look at his. So here is the unit itself. It's a switching power supply, obviously. And I gonna go out in the limb and say it's probably a capacitor is bad. What do you think? You think the chances are pretty good? But I got a bad cap on this one. I think the chances are probably excellent that we have a bad cap on this power board somewhere. So here's the power board. This is actually the other power board, not the one that's in the unit. This is the, the secondary one. The other one, the caps are still be charged on it. So I grabbed the second board because it's already completely discharged. That way we can measure some capacitors on here and see which ones their ESR is going high on and uh, go in there and change them and see if we can get this one to start up. And then we'll get this one to start up. I'll put it in the, in the unit itself and then go and change the same parts on the other one because chances are they both have the same fault. And typically it's the way this thing's chattering like this, it could be a couple, a couple things, but But generally it's going to be one of the caps has gone bad. Now the ones I'm thinking that are going to be problematic are, are some of these ones in the oscillator circuit. Uh, maybe this 100 at 100 volts here. And this 22 at uh, 50, 50 volts looks like. And possibly these other two over here. These surface mounted caps. So if I get the ESR meter going here. Zero it out. That one's measuring open. That one's shot. And I bet you these two over here are also, also bad. That one's also measuring open, as is that one. So probably those caps uh, to start. I'll measure some of the other ones while, while I'm here, but I think it's probably limited to those caps that's bad. That one's measuring good. What about these two down here? 0.4. Point four, yeah, those ones are not open, but certainly that that one's open, that one's open, that one's open. So we'll start by changing those caps out, and we'll try this power supply and see whether it comes back to life. And if that's the case, we'll do the same on the other one and uh, get this unit working. Apparently, that's the only fault that he's got with it is that the power supplies are are bad. So hopefully, there's no other damage because I don't have any service data. For these units but definitely that one's open and that one's open as well 22 at 50 I should have some caps for that I'm gonna cut these ones to take them out as opposed to using the hot air station just because there's other components that are in the direct vicinity that I don't want to get blown away so this is a 22 at 50 We'll take this one out first. I 
I don't have a 100 at one uh, 100 at 100 volts so we'll have to test it without changing that one and I'll have to get some stock uh, though it's not open it's um, measuring a little bit up on the ESR but it certainly is not open so it's pr it might even be okay at this point of the game These uh, surface mounted ones are the ones that really causes the most amount of trouble. Why companies use them, especially in something that's as big as this. I mean, it's not like you needed them for the, for the size. You know, it's one thing if you're working on something very small like a camcorder or something where you need to have a small capacitor for the size of it. That's one thing, but this has got lots of room, so why use these surface mounted caps in the first place? It's almost like it was designed to fail because it's not like we need the space right there's there's lots of room to put a conventional cap in here Okay, this should be to the point where I can power it up and see whether it will, will turn on and give me any voltages. And if it does, then uh, this one's ready to go, this, this power supply, and then I can work on the other one. Let me just get a, a, a cheater cord so I can give it power. 
Okay, I got it on the dim bulbs uh, power supply now. So it'll start up at reduced voltage, so it might click a couple times, but uh, ideally I'd like to see the voltage come on here. I don't have power applied to it, I'm just looking to see which, which pins are, are voltage. Looks like I've got a positive and a negative supply. Uh, the two outer pins here are the hot and the ground are the next ones over, with the exception of the middle pin. So let's just grab the meter, we'll hook the meter up to one side of it and just see whether I get any voltage coming out the secondary, which will tell me whether the power supply is working. So which on ground, that's ground there. So we'll put it ground on and we'll put on one of the power pins here. We got power. That was on reduced. We'll just turn off the limiter. We got power. 27 volts on one side, and the other side's probably going to be the negative 27. I don't know how much power this amp, how much power this thing's supposed to put out, but there's that one. So it seems to be seems to be uh, working. Throw this in the amplifier and see if the amp fires up. So of course to swap it I gotta pull the screws out. Unplug the main power here first. Ah, that's why. I was wondering why it was stuck down there. The heat sink compound stuck it down. Okay, stick the new board back in, or the rebuilt board back in, I should say, and we'll see what powers up. back has to basically be removed so that you can get the uh, power fitting through the back of it so you have to remove the screws from the back and the side 
So there's uh, six screws in the back and four on the side that need to come out just to uh, free up the uh, power connector so the board can be removed. It's not that big a deal to change. I just noticed I missed uh, 22 50 volt right here and this one obviously will be open as well so we'll just we'll just clip this one out from the top here and just replace it I've got one more to do and that will hopefully get this power supply working and then I can get some more caps to fix it because I don't have any more 2250s this is the last one that I've got I got lots of 22 caps but none in 50 volts but I can get some more next week. When the shore is open again, as it's the holiday weekend here, so everything's gonna be shut down over the Easter weekend. Let's cut this one out right on the board itself. It's easier when the board's out, but still certainly doable without removing it. There we go. It is fixed. Hook up a source to it and uh, we'll listen to it play. So if we look at this amp, the way it's wired up, it's got two bass amps and two treble. This is this is a six channel amplifier. So this one's been configured for bi-amp. These one might be full range for that matter. I haven't tried them, but I've just got the two bass channels hooked up and then we'll hook up the two treble channels. So this is the two bass channels that I'll get to play here. So now I'll hook up the two treble channels. And of course you can only hear the Hoot Tweeters because that's what they're EQ'd for. It's just for the tweeters. I'll hook up the other two channels. I don't know if they're going to do anything because I don't see any of these boards, but maybe they're bypassed and they'll do full range. So here's the channel five and six. These might be wired for full range. Let's find out. And they are, they're wired for full range. So the way that this amplifier is, is, is configured as it sits, it's a six channel amplifier. Channel one and two is for the left channel woofer and tweeter. Channel three and four is for the right channel woofer and tweeter. And channel five and six is full range. More than likely that would be driving either surround speakers or uh, center channel, two centers, or center and surround. Could be center on one and, and two rear speakers for surround or however it's configured, but um, hey, it's fixed. If you've got one of these Lin power amps that's uh, doing the click, 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 click and not turning on, change the surface mounted caps. Those are the only ones that were bad on this one. I checked all the others. The others are all testing good. Just the four surface mounted caps. There, there, wow. Let's um, look at the other board. So this is, this is the spare board that I fixed. This is the board that came out of the amp. I will be servicing this board before I send it back, but these are the caps that are gonna get changed. I'll check them all, but those ones for sure. Th those four need to be changed on this. And I have to get some more because I've run out of, of 50 volt 22 microfarad caps. I only had four, I only had three. I only had three in stock, those three. And then that one's a 2.2. So the three, two, 22 microfarad 50 volt and a 2.2 microfarad, um, 
that was also was that L50 volt I think it was anyway that those are the four that go bad on this one that caused this amp to go bad now as I say I'll be rebuilding this I'll do that as a separate video because we can test this once it's done I'll test it and make sure that it is turning on that was it and that fixed the problem on this one it doesn't do the click click when it starts up it just starts right up as you can see if I turn it off okay it's off I turn it on it comes right on which is what it's supposed to now to reassemble this beast just put the shielding back in place this is actually part of the ventilation because it's got forced air the front cover just slides over the front like that and a couple screws in the bottom here we go it's all done I like these units these are a very nice sounding amplifier and uh, they're a lot of money they're made in the, the UK and uh, they are a nice, expensive, great sounding piece of gear. Anyway, uh, we'll service this one next week when I get some more parts. I'll do a video on the service of this and see if this one has the same parts failed. I'm sure it does. Maybe there's more. Could be. But for sure, those four are going to be definitely bad. We'll check them all though. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.